that's cool that there's seagulls. They must fly 50 or 60 kilometers up to up the river every day from the sea and then go back in the evening again. But you wouldn't really think they'd just come up to get fed by some bread, you know? You never, they're always just sitting about on the river. They only come in winter time. Maybe they're kitty wakes. Yeah, we're here down at the, the orange groves and this is an irrigation, irrigation aqueduct. It must be quite old, look, it's held up there, shouldn't it be on here? It's held up by uh, posts. A little bit of fake reading there. It's actually a good book, it's, uh, I got it for Christmas and it's written by a Spanish lady, it's in Spanish, but it's also it's set in Scotland, which is good for me. So it's nice in the castle and they found a secret passage, <laughs> typical, I don't know what it's about, El Camino del Fuego, I'll find out, but it's like some guy and he's got property and they've got a castle, he owns a castle, I want to, you know, they rent out or whatever, but he's found, they found like, a, they're just about to find a secret passageway in it, the typical Scottish thing. That they have the, the romantic idea they have of Scotland with its all its castles and stuff, but they, they don't realise the feudal. It's well, it's kind of similar to Spain, the feudal thing in Scotland, landowners and have, what have you. Yeah, so being quite busy this week, had a gig down at uh, and a nice gig to the uh, with for some kids uh, for a school historic. Uh, uh, tour of the center and then I'm there in one part of the the tour playing guitar playing flamenco in one square I'm standing there playing some tunes for a group called Triana because that's where they made a photo and then in another place I am playing like different styles of flamenco and then the kids who come around they have to guess what they are and some of them are really good they really know uh, what I'm playing and stuff and it's funny you know and then and then I start playing in a style that's called Sevillanas which is like a the folk dance here that everyone does and some of the kids start dancing and that so we have a good laugh it's a really it's really great and the folk that organize that it's a place called it's called uh, uh, Legados and they have they're archaeologists actually and but they also have these historic tours and the friend of mine Ernesto and Lara they both do the tour the kids you know they were from primary five and primary six and Lara was saying yesterday how that she took them to in front of the Giralda and she put them in front of the Giralda if you don't know what the Giralda is it's one of the mo it's the most important landmark in Seville it's a big old Moorish tower that was for the call to prayer that was a part of the mosque in the center when it when uh, Seville was the important place for the for the uh, Arab Arab world for the Muslim world and uh, she put them at the kids in front of the tower she said oh, what's this and none of them knew what it was none of them knew what the Giralda was and she was like couldn't believe that you know because I mean it's such a I mean any kid from her generation from our generation who's from Seville would know would immediately know what the Giralda is because it's so important but I was thinking you know the kids you know that you, you know they have so much information now so much coming at them you know just so many things you know with the internet and this wall and but also just even if it wasn't the internet you know just the development of things over the last however many years you know that we're accumulating knowledge constantly 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 and that's sort of like when you see like the um, the advancement of uh, technology and all that you know originally the hunter gatherers they just had stones and stuff and then tie and things but the, those guys were just as intelligent as us they were just as intelligent as us and, and really their brains were just as sharp as ours but of course with time you knowledge goes gets accumulated it gets accumulated accumulated and you get more and more knowledge and so then uh, technology advances and so now the kids nowadays especially with like something like chat it's like chat G gpt or chat gtp chat gpt the, this new thing this artificial intelligence which will write an essay for you which will basically do anything for you it's got just like a whole bunch of uh, knowledge inside it so the amount of information that kids are getting now it's hard for them to keep up and maybe some of the traditional stuff is doesn't uh, stay with them so much you know simple things that all, every kid in andalusia knew what the heralda was 
originally, you know, from like my generation or from Lara's especially. But she couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe that the kids didn't know what the Giralda was. But anyway, I'm there playing different styles of flamenco. So that was a nice gig and that's a good, that's a beautiful thing, you know, and it's good. The kids really love it and it's interesting. I mean, Seville has the center of Seville has such an incredible history. And I mean, it's golden ages past, you know, it's, that was when, it, when they discovered the Americas and all that. And also, I mean, the Arab time when the, when the Arabs, when the, the, the you know, Mecca, I mean, the, the Mecca, Cordoba, is another city in Andalusia. That was like the Mecca, as important as Mecca is now for the Muslim world, Cordoba was that. It was like the Mecca in the West. So it was, Andalusia was a very important time in the Arab time for, for however long it was, from 711 till 1492, when they got right out of Granada, yes. It was the last place, the last Moorish kings were in Granada. And anyway, so that was interesting. So history and that. So I learned a lot. So I just, when, when I'm with those friends, you know, I just shut up and listen because I mean, I, I have my Scottish education, which you can imagine, you can imagine. But so I just shut up and listen to them talking about all the different stuff. And they're all like, Lara has like an, such a knowledge of um, history and politics and it's amazing, and even about Scotland, she knows loads about Scotland as well, she loves going to Scotland. Anyway, that was good, and we also had a gig at the press conference for the Flamenco Dress Fashion Show, it was a press conference with the Mayor of Seville was there and all that. So that was a good gig, and that was a well-paid gig, which was a good thing. That was interesting. But it's always like, there's always so much to do, and I've got so, always got so much. I was also out playing for tourists in the Plaza España, in the big plaza. And that's a good gig as well, because that's playing with dancers, and it's just like great fun for me, you know, because they can just like go a bit crazy, it's cathartic, playing, uh, improvising, and playing, accompanying the dancers. And uh, I enjoy that, because it's just like, uh, it's like busking, you know. But you actually make quite a lot, you make more money doing that than you do on a, a regular gig because the regular gigs, bar places can't, don't, can't afford to pay musicians. They probably, probably can't afford, afford to pay their staff. But uh, yeah, I was saying that for that gig, it was a well-paid gig for the press conference for the opening of the Fashion Week. And uh, the, well, the drummer, for example, the drummer in the band, Nacho, fantastic drummer and magic guy, he's a great drummer. He had a bad cold and that, but when I called him and I told him it was well paid, he suddenly felt a lot better because it was well paid good. So he came down to do the gig, it was good. But he's been off, I think, had he's been sent a couple of gigs that to bands saying, No, no, I can't manage it because he's the typical drummer that is, doesn't get married to anyone and just plays all different gigs with all different uh, projects and all that. He's always popping up and everywhere. And I always say to him, Pero Nacho, you're always doing loads and loads of gigs and that, and you see, he says, yeah, 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 but they're all like, uh, you know how it is, Philip, <laughs> you know, they're all like really badly paid, and it's true, you know, you go and play in jazz clubs and stuff here, and if it's not like a sponsor, a corporate sponsor thing, like I was doing, that was the, the, the fashion store thing, which was money from the government to do that, like the tourism and culture thing, and then if it's a private club or bar, they can hire, I think we actually get paid less now than we did 20 years ago as musicians, doing like regular gigs. You know, if I have my project, like the Philip Addy Trio, I have to go and play somewhere. I got a gig in a, a jazz club and stuff. You no, know, you're lucky if you, you know, it's, I'm embarrassed to say how little we get paid. And I know, I also understand that the, the clubs and that don't have money to, to pay us, unless there's like, you know, unless you can get into the, the bolsa, the bag, the big bag that the, the, the government has, you know, and all that sort of stuff, you know. You, you have to go with the trends, you know. For example, now it's trending, uh, you can say, I don't want to go there, you know, politics and all that, politicians, oh my God. But we'll keep going, and I was supposed to be too, I mean, I've got a lot of stuff to work on, but today, you know, Sunday, I don't have a gig, I didn't have a gig, I don't have a gig today or anything. But I uh, tidied the house a bit, but I've got a lot of stuff to work on that I have to work on for music and that and for gigs and for rehearsals. I'm rehearsing with a, a singer and there's a couple of jazz tunes that are difficult and I should be at home playing them, but, but you know, I couldn't get, I couldn't, uh, I wanted to come out, I wanted to come out down the park, you know, because sometimes it's hard to, difficult to concentrate. 
to do my music. I've personally noticed that recently since because I must be about 250 days without taking a drink of alcohol and without smoking and without doing anything else. And I've, like, I've been doing that kind of stuff since I was a kid, you know, and now I've stopped, completely stopped. So I have a very clear and serene mind. But if you smoke and do stuff like that, you know, then you get there's a that creates a friction and from that friction there's heat there's energy comes off and you get from that energy you do your art you do your thing you're creative and you get into it from that friction you know and when you don't have that friction well like i am now you're like more clear it's it's kind of come i still haven't got used to it it's almost a year but it's still but i'm actually play when i play music and that i'm better I'm more serious i'm more clear of clear of head and stuff but I, you know, going out to a bar and stuff I mean the whole thing of Christmas was a funny thing because that was um, the first Christmas I've had since I was maybe 12 or 13 that I haven't taken alcohol, I haven't drunk or smoked <laughs> imagine in Scotland you know uh, when I was that age and, and what I noticed was it was a fantastic Christmas, it was beautiful because the, all the emotions and I felt and all that were like weren't coming from been drinking because there's a the thing you know the drinking when you lose your inhibitions you feel start to feel all that stuff in that and you know you get all that emotional and all that you know like things like nostalgia and all that and drinking and it's, it's i didn't have any of that and uh is that a good thing is it a bad thing well i don't think it's either of that i don't know you can say but at least i feel kind of clear and kind of serene in my head even though I find it difficult sometimes to concentrate on what I need to be doing and where I need to be going with life you know because a lot of, it gives the friction from smoking or from smoking uh, or from taking drugs or from alcohol and stuff the friction gives you direction in your life gives a meaning to your life I used to think that smoking you know life wouldn't have any meaning if I didn't smoke you know <laughs> it's unbelievable Unbelievable. But anyway, but it's all good, it's all good. So I'm ended up down at the park with a flask, with a flask of tea and a book and a bit of a vlogging going on. And it's beautiful. I mean, can never complain here about I mean you can understand I have like three a uh, two no I have two bottles of beautiful single malt and one bottle of Grant's which I used to drink in a cupboard at home, you know, and I've not touched them for 250 days and I'm, don't, I'm not going to either, I'm not going to, but uh, you can understand in the cold climate, you know, having a dram to warm you up because <laughs> it's so beautiful here. from the madding crowd. <laughs> 